Plot Summary of Blood Wedding by Federico Garcia Lorca A young man called the bridegroom walks into his house and tells his mother that he's going to cut grapes in their vineyard. This worries his mother, who curses knives and anything else that can cut a man's body. In this way, she talks about how members of the Felix family killed the bridegroom's father and brother. She is upset that the murderers were only put in jail and are still alive, which she thinks is not enough of a punishment. The bridegroom wants to change the subject, so he asks, are you going to stop? But she keeps talking about violence and death, saying that she doesn't like it when he leaves the house because she's afraid something will happen to him. In the end, the bridegroom is able to get her attention away from him by telling her about his plans to get married. When he tells his mother about this, she is happy for him, but she also points out that she doesn't know the young woman and that everything is happening very quickly. Still, she says she knows the bride is good, and she agrees to meet the bride and her father that Sunday to make the wedding plans official. When the bridegroom leaves, a neighbor comes in and talks to his mother. The neighbor asks her if she knows anything about the girl her son is going to marry. The neighbor says that the bride is a pretty young woman whose father lives far away. The neighbor says that the girl's mother is dead and that the bride's mother never loved her husband. Lastly, she tells the bridegroom's mother that the bride was dating Leonardo Felix very seriously. In fact, they were very close to getting married, but Leonardo ended up marrying the girl's cousin instead. When the old woman hears this, she is upset that her son's bride has been linked to the Felix family. Her neighbor tells her to calm down and reminds her that Leonardo was only eight years old when their families fought. In the next scene, Leonardo's wife and mother-in-law try to calm Leonardo's baby by singing a lullaby about a horse who won't drink from a stream because its hooves are bleeding into the water. Not long after the baby finally falls asleep, Leonardo comes in and says he's been at the blacksmith's getting new horseshoes because his horse always breaks them. When his wife says that this might be because he works the horse too hard, Leonardo says, I don't ride him very often. His wife, on the other hand, says that her neighbors said they saw him the day before on the other side of the plains, which is a long way away. Still, Leonardo says this isn't true, even though his mother-in-law sees the horse and says it looks like it came from the end of the world. When the wife sees that her husband is getting more and more angry, she changes the subject by telling him that the bridegroom wants to marry her cousin. But, unfortunately, this only makes him feel worse. When his mother-in-law says that the bridegroom's mother is not very happy about the wedding, he says of the bride, that one needs watching. Then, a young girl walks in and tells them that she saw the bridegroom and his mother buy expensive gifts for the bride. When she starts to talk about the stockings they bought, Leonardo snaps at her and says, we couldn't care less. Then he leaves the house in a rage, waking up the baby as he goes. On Sunday, the bridegroom and his mother drive four hours to meet the bride and her father. As soon as the father walks in, he starts talking about his land, boasting that he had to punish it to get it to grow asparto crops because it is so dry. When the bridegroom's mother heard how interested he was in land, she told him that they wouldn't need a dowry because their vineyards were already doing so well. The father then makes up a story about putting all of their land together, saying that it would be a beautiful thing the two parents then agree that the wedding should take place the following Thursday, which is also the 22nd birthday of the bride. The mother says, that's how old my son would be if he were still alive. The father tells her not to dwell on such sad things, but she says she'll think about it every minute until she dies. Before long, the bride enters and accepts the gifts from the bridegroom's mother. As she does so, the mother notices that she's quite solemn, so she takes her chin in her hand and says, you know what getting married is, child? When the bride says yes, the bridegroom's mother says what she thinks marriage means, a man, children, and a two-foot-thick wall for the rest. The bride agrees with this and says, I know my duty. The bridegroom and his mother then leave with the bridegroom. When the bride is alone, her servant tells her to open her gifts, but the bride doesn't care about these things. For God's sake, cries out the servant. It seems like you're not interested in getting married. She then says that she saw Leonardo on his horse the night before. She says that she saw him by the bride's window. 
At first, the bride denies this and calls the servant a liar, but she soon gives up this act and says that the servant is right, Leonardo was there. The servant helps the bride get ready for the wedding in the morning. But when the bride tries to put an orange blossom wreath that the bridegroom gave her on her head, she throws the flowers on the floor. Child. The servant says, don't tempt fate by throwing the flowers on the floor. You don't want to get married, do you? Instead of answering, the bride says she feels like a cold wind is blowing through her, but she then adds that she loves the bridegroom. She adds, but it's a very big step. Shortly after that, Leonardo walks into the room. He is the first guest to arrive at the wedding. The bride's servant tells her not to let him see her in her underwear, but she doesn't listen. Instead, she has a passionate conversation with her ex-lover, who says that the bridegroom should have gotten her a smaller orange blossom because it would fit her better. Then, they get into a heated argument about how the bride wouldn't marry Leonardo when they were together because he wasn't rich enough. Leonardo ended up marrying her cousin, but he hasn't stopped thinking about her. But now that she's about to get married, he knows he has to tell her how he feels. When she tells him she wants to shut herself away with the bridegroom and love him above everything, he tells her, to keep quiet and burn is the worst punishment we can give ourselves. Even though she wants to be strong, she admits that just hearing his voice makes her weak. The servant then makes Leonardo leave. The bridegroom and the wedding guests will soon be pouring into the house. The bride tells her future husband that she wants the wedding to happen quickly by saying, I want to be your wife and be alone with you and hear only your voice. She also says that she wants him to hold her so tightly that she can't get away even if she wants to. After this, the couple heads to the church, and the guests sing about how happy they are for them as they follow. After everyone has left, Leonardo's wife tells him how upset she is that he doesn't seem to care about her. She says she knows she's been thrown aside, but he doesn't do anything to make her feel better. After the ceremony, the newlyweds and their guests go to the house of the bride's father to dance and have fun. As the party starts, the bridegroom's mother talks to the bride's father about the possibility of having grandchildren. The father, on the other hand, can't wait for his son to have kids because it will give him more people to work on his farm. Even though these are happy conversations, the bride stays sad and uninterested. Eventually, she says she has to go lie down because she has a headache. Soon after, Leonardo's wife comes running through the party looking for him, and everyone finds out that he and his ex-lover have run away together, riding off on a horse into the woods. When the bridegroom's mother hears this, she tells the bride's father to get his family together and go after Leonardo. It's time for blood again, she says. In the middle of the woods, a traditional Greek chorus of woodcutters talks about the lovers who ran away. Even though the woodcutters want the bride and Leonardo to get away without getting hurt, the moon soon comes to life and says it wants to shine light on the forest so the lovers won't be able to hide. Also, Lorca's stage note says that an old beggar woman who represents death shows up and says that Leonardo and the bride will not make it past the nearby stream. Soon, the bridegroom and another young man ride up and talk about the chase. When his helper suggests that they go back, the bridegroom says he can't because his family has a history with the Felix family. At this point, he runs into the woman who is asking for money, and she joins him in looking for Leonardo and the bride. But just as they're leaving, the lovers come out and talk about how dangerous what they've done is. The bride is sorry she ran away, but only because she put Leonardo in danger by doing so. Still, they both agree that only death will separate them. Just after they leave, Two very loud screams can be heard in the dark woods. Three little girls play with a ball of red yarn after the wedding. They talk about what happened and wonder why none of the guests have come back from the ceremony. The old woman who begs for money finally shows up and tells them that both the bridegroom and Leonardo have died. When she and the girls leave, the bridegroom's mother and her next-door neighbor come in and talk about what happened. They're all dead now, says the mother. I'll sleep at midnight, and I won't be afraid of a gun or a knife. She is sad, but she won't cry because she doesn't want her other neighbors, who are starting to come in, to see her fall apart. 
But when the bride shows up, it's hard for her to keep her anger in check. The young woman says, you would have gone too. I was a woman who was burning from the inside out, and your son was a tiny drop of water that I hoped would give me children, land, and health. She says that Leonardo was like a dark river that took her away. The bridegroom's mother can't stop crying, so she hits the bride. The bride takes it well, telling the old woman that she just wants to cry with her. So, the bridegroom's mother tells her that she can cry by the door because nothing matters to her anymore. At this point, the two women start to speak in verse, trading lines and lamenting the loss of their loved ones as people come in and start to cry. About the author. His father was a wealthy farmer who was married to a teacher. Together they raised four children, of which Federico Garcia Lorca was the eldest. When the author was 10 years old, the family moved to Granada, where Garcia Lorca enrolled in a Catholic school as well as a secular institute run by the Roman Catholic Church. Later, Garca Lorca went to the University of Granada. Because he didn't do well in school, it took him nine years to get a degree. As a young man, he gave up playing the piano to write instead. He became friends with many artists, including filmmaker Luis Buell and painter Salvador Dal. In 1919, he wrote The Butterfly's Evil Spell, which was his first play. It was written in verse. Unfortunately, it was largely made fun of by critics and thus only ran for four shows. In the 1920s, Garca Lorca became part of Spain's avant-garde scene. He published poetry and plays, including his most popular poetry collection, Gypsy Ballads, which came out in 1928 and is mostly about life in Andalusia, which was a theme he kept coming back to throughout his career. After spending a short time in New York City in 1929, the author went back to Spain during the dictatorship of Primo de Rivera. There, he worked as an actor and director for a traveling theater group that brought plays to small towns all over the country. It was during this period that he penned three plays now known as the Rural Trilogy, which includes Blood Wedding, Yerma, and The House of Bernarda Alba. As he put on these plays, people learned that he was a socialist. But because the Spanish government was fascist at the time, he was arrested in 1936 on the same day that his brother-in-law was killed in Granada after being elected mayor. People say that Garca Lorca was killed the next day for political reasons, but others say that there were other reasons for his death. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.